Good evening, James. You know, I've always wanted to say that. Come on, James, tell me something about the show. It's going to be different and fun, and finally, we're getting rid of the good evening, James. Oh. Okay, girls, it's time to practice the most important part of the show. Ready? Good evening, James. Good evening, James. Good evening. Good evening, James. Forgetting something? It's Saturday night, and live from the John McIntosh Hall Theatre, this is Miss Gibraltar 2016. Those little boys making all that noise, but they ain't gonna steal the show. No fancy cars or bass guitars, fellas in suits smoking on cigars. Just play that song and know, take a deep breath and blow. Get loose, get right, get a grip and rock me all night. Hold tight, lean back, play what I want for that sex. Get loose, get right, get a grip and rock me all night. Hold tight, lean back, play what I want for that sex. Honey, he's so vain, he be loving him. 
yourself more than giving yeah i'm like boy stop what that back you can look so good but can you play that sack that's good, Mr. Know It All. Think it got me down to a formula. I'm like, boy, stop, run that back. Yeah, I'm so fine, you can play that set. Baby, baby, I've been waiting for some water blow my mind. Baby, baby, you can get it if you got that play my life. I need a Your hosts, James Niche, Kellyanne Turnbull, and Simon Dumas. Wow, it's uh, here tonight. We crown a new Miss Gibraltar. Good evening. What a fantastic night we're going to have. We're ready to have a great time. And we are definitely ready to rock. Tonight, one of our nine beautiful contestants becomes the 54th Miss Gibraltar. And all our music tonight live from resident band, after hours, and guests. Okay, well, let's get this party started and uh, you play a vital and important role in it all tonight. Our live audience here at the John McIntosh Hall Theatre, are you ready to dance? Because tonight, everyone dances on Miss Gibraltar 2016. Let's go! One, two, three! Wow, well, you should all be up here. I've practiced that 20 times. I managed to get it wrong. You managed to get it right. This is Miss Gibraltar 2016. Now, has your party started at home? No matter where you're watching the show from tonight, if you're hosting your own Miss Gibraltar party, we want to know about it. So take a picture, make it fun, but do keep it clean and post it on social media or on our official Facebook page with the hashtag Miss Gibraltar. So this is where it's all happening this evening, so stick around, because who knows, you may even learn a secret or two about our contestants. The secret about myself that no one knows. I think that I am quite a shy person, and many people don't realise that. Um, this is, this is all recording. Um, I'm trying to think. I don't think I have one. <laughs> Oh my goodness, let me just think for a second. Oh god, I don't know. 
I don't know. <laughs> is all this recording? Is this gonna be a, a secret about me? I shoved foam up my nose when I was three and I got really bad temperature. <laughs> I had to blow them up my nose as if I was blowing a candle. <laughs> I'm really quite quiet, but I'm not quite quiet. I'm a weird out person. <laughs> I don't know what you want me to say. I still listen to Spice Girls. Uh, I don't know, quite open. I think I don't really have any secrets. Why are you? <laughs> I think I have one. I talk too much to keep secrets. I don't know. <laughs> Seriously, I don't have any secrets. Oh, difficult question though. <laughs> I don't know what to answer to that. And the contestants will be live on stage once again in a short while. I'm sure you're all going to agree with me that uh, the five men and women judging the pageant tonight are going to have a very difficult decision to make tonight. Isn't the standard so high? They're all doing so, so well. Let's meet our panel of judges. And judge number one is a journalist who's written for the American magazine Pageantry. He's actually writing his first novel at the moment and has written six uh, series for BBC Children. He's also a former competitor editor in men's pageants in the 90s and he's judged around the world. Please give a warm welcome to Gibraltar to judge number one, his journalist David Goodliffe. Our second judge is the organiser for the Miss England heats and is currently the manager for the reigning Miss England. Our judge has been supporting the Miss World charity Beauty with a Purpose and working closely as an ambassador for Life After Breast Cancer. Please welcome the manager for Miss England, Charlie Jordan. Our third judge has represented England at the Miss World Finals in Sanya. She's an English literature student at Nottingham Trent. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the reigning Miss England, Natasha Hemmings. Just making sure that we navigate those steps. Our fourth judge, uh, you may have seen on television. He's represented England at the Mr. World Finals. He's actually doing that next month. He's an active sports person specializing in athletics and golf. Please welcome Mr. England, Christopher Bramwell. And you've also seen our fifth judge on uh, television. He's one of the main presenters on uh, Sky News, currently anchors the uh, channel's Sunrise uh, program. And he's uh, a news presenter who, of course, uh, is uh, very much at ease uh, presenting breaking news, but also the lighter side of uh, entertainment. He's a brilliant uh, presenter, and you may recognize him because he's come to become a brilliant friend of Gibraltar. Please welcome Sky News presenter Stephen Dixon. And uh, the judges are, of course, um, accompanied tonight by members from Gibraltar Cultural Services. A big, big thank you to Newtons for providing uh, the computer system for the points uh, tonight. So plenty of entertainment is coming your way. And uh, very, very shortly, uh, we're going to have uh, some of our band members. You've seen uh, Joanna and uh, Mary performing. They're from the Royal Northern uh, College of Music. They're going to be taking to the stage with our very own uh, Jeremy Beres for Don't Stop Believing. But first, let's find out what Miss Gibraltar wins tonight. More than £5,000 for tonight's lucky winner and the chance to represent Gibraltar at the Miss World pageant. Plus, all for Miss Gibraltar 2016. Just a small town girl 
Just a city boy, born and raised in South Detroit. She took the midnight train going anywhere. looking stunning in their outfits from Lily Boutique tonight, Simon. <laughs> you know what, Kelly, they look great, and I've just sent a text to some friends in university. I know they're streaming this live from the GBC website. Hello. Uh, it's because the girls, they're not gonna miss, you're not going to want to miss what's up next. It's the girls in their swimwear. So a big thanks to Boo Avenue for kitting them out this evening. Yeah, so shall we see what all the fuss is about? Yeah. Let's welcome right. our nine contestants back on stage, but this time in their swimwear. Contestant number four, Rosana Fernandez, sponsored by the Alguani Group of Companies. Thank you. 
contestant number six, Alex Enriles. She's sponsored by Trends. Body fits on my like a glove. Let them say whatever they want. It's too late to jump in my blood now. You got the lock. I got the key. You know the rest. You know just where I want to be. Don't ever stop controlling me. I kind of like it when you bring me to my knees. You got me wrapped up around your finger. I do anything. Contestant number two, Maxine Fields, sponsored by Isolas. Takes me up so high I can't come. Go, you got me wrapped up. Oh, you got me so wrapped up. Oh, there's something about you. Wrapped up. Oh, you got me so wrapped up. Oh, there's something about you. Everything that you do. Contestant number seven, Jesslyn Ferrari, sponsored by Mathbro. Contestant number one, Sarah Jane Adnett, sponsored by MH Bland. Number three, Kaylee Mifsud, sponsored by Jib Oil. Contestant number nine, Ashleen Snape, sponsored by Property World Real Estate. Contestant number five, Josanne Bear, sponsored by GM International Homes. Contestant number eight, Aisha Ben Yaya, sponsored by MRW. I know you know that I made those mistakes maybe once or twice. But I won't.
once or twice, I mean maybe a couple of hundred times. So let me, oh let me redeem, oh redeem, oh myself tonight. Cause I just need one more shot, second chances. Yeah, is it too late now to say sorry? Cause I'm missing more than just your body. No, is it too late now to say sorry? Yeah, I know that I let you down. Is it too late to say I'm sorry now? I'm sorry. 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 Yeah, I know. You know that there's no way there's someone in him that's gay for two. But I'll go, I'll go, then you go out right on, then you spill the truth. Can we both say the world just forget this? Yeah, this isn't too late now to say sorry. Cause I'm missing more than just your body. Whoa, this isn't too late now to say sorry. Cause they are no your town, it's a little to say something now, I'm not trying to go back at your body, cause I'm missing more than just your body, oh, does it too late now to say sorry, because I know that I'm gonna let you down, is it too late to say sorry now? One in this game for two. I'll go, I'll go, and then you go, you go, and I'll spill the truth. And we both say the words and forget this. Yeah, is it too late now to say sorry? Cause I'm missing more than just your body. No, is it too late now to say sorry? Yeah, I know. Is it too late to say I'm sorry now? I'm not. I'm sorry. Sorry. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for our nine Miss Gibraltar contestants. And judges, uh, you'll get uh, plenty more chances, plenty more opportunities to see the contestants on stage this evening. Speaking of judges, hello. Have another chance to say good evening. And uh, I know you've had a chance to go for a rock tour. I think you went dinner at the Rock Hotel as well. So you've had a chance to see Gibraltar, but we couldn't help but wonder whether you had a chance to experience the Gibraltar that we all know and love. Yeah, so let's uh, tell our judges a bit about what makes us 100% Yanito. Because one of the things that you need to know is that the, the weather in Gibraltar never does what it's supposed to do. So for example, on one of the days in April, they say April showers, so off we went to record the charity single, Our Home, and we wanted it to be raining. Hacía una calor. So it wasn't raining, so we had to put a poor man outside the window with a hose all night. You can just about make him hear, ahí regando la La Ventana, all night for four and a half hours whilst we recorded the charity single. So we said, well, the weather's nice, so the next day off we go to do the bikini shoot. 24 hours later, caía un agua. I'm sure you didn't get that, but that's quite all right. So here we had to give the girls umbrellas, and that was the bikini photo shoot. <laughs> Look, James, I, I can honestly say, you know, living and studying in England, when there's any hint of sunshine, which there was when I landed here on Wednesday, it's amazing. So for me, uh, one of the most bizarre things I find in Gibraltar is that, one, there's a cake stall on almost every week, and at every cake stall, everyone will turn up with a Tupperware. 
ready to just buy everything. Because we just love to eat. That don't doesn't we? happen in Manchester. <laughs> <laughs> We're also quite good at making fun of ourselves. Now, Simon has been texting me constantly for the last two weeks, going on and on about uh, the picture we've been using to promote the presenters for this show. Now, I see absolutely nothing wrong with this picture. Perhaps I've had a little bit of Photoshop done, I have to admit. But what's wrong with this picture, Simon? Uh, I can honestly say that I've got friends in university who said, Oh, James, uh, Simon, are th are th those are your parents behind you. What a lovely family photo you've got. But, so, I'm not joking. Very funny. So this is me marrying Kelly. Y tú que estás haciendo la primera comunión. You didn't get that either, we know. <laughs> well, look, we know we can make fun of ourselves. People do have a laugh with us as well. Listen to this answer on Radio Gibraltar's 54321. Name three uh, things you'd find in a Mr. Gibraltar show. <laughs> Power cut. <laughs> Only in Gibraltar. That one's never getting old. Do you get that on air? Okay. So we want you to have a fantastic uh, evening. We want you to leave the theatre and just say, you know what? What a fantastic night we've had. And uh, the entertainment goes a long way to providing that. Definitely. Yeah. Up next, we've got an amazing, amazing girl. She's a great young talent here in Gibraltar with an outstanding voice. Performing I Will Survive with Stylus Dance Studios, Chloe Martinez. At first I was afraid, I was petrified. Kept thinking I could never live without you by my side. But then I spent so many nights thinking how you did me wrong and I grew strong. And I learned how to get along What an amazing voice, Chloe Martinez. And I'm here on the balcony of the John McIntosh Hall for a closer look at tonight's resident band. On the drums, please give it up for Mr. Ivan Israel. On the bass guitar, it's Robert Perez. 
And on the lead guitar, we've got Mr. Jerry Fortuna. Doing his thing on the keys, it's Trevor Giliano. Also on the balcony this evening, it's After Hours frontman, Tim Garcia. And all the way from Manchester, we've got Mary McDougall, Joanna Brown, and Gibraltar's very own, Jeremy Bennett. Over to you, James. Thank you very much, uh, Simon. I'm joined on stage now by the chairperson of our panel of judges, Sky News presenter Stephen Dixon. Welcome back. It's great to be back here in Gibraltar. I love it here. Now, the contestants. <laughs> the contestants, they're looking absolutely brilliant. What a tough job you have tonight. <laughs> you have no idea. We thought it was tough yesterday with the interview round. We all sat down afterwards and said, what are we going to do? Um, and with the swimwear around, it's exactly the same. It is amazing. This is going to be so close tonight. So given that you think it's going to be that close tonight, what do the contestants have to do to impress you as judges? What are you looking for? I think we're looking for confidence, for charisma, and for an inner beauty, which you see on stage, but also we saw yesterday, actually in every single contestant in the interviews. And it's mixing all of those together. Well, as you say, you met the contestants yesterday for a one-to-one, -one, but we've put in our own question, and we've asked the nine contestants why they think that they should be crowned Miss Gibraltar 2016. I feel very lucky to come from Gibraltar. It's offered me a lot of opportunities, for example, the fully funded university education. And I think that these opportunities have given me a good chance to grow as a person. I would be absolutely honoured to represent Gibraltar internationally. And I know that beauty pageants are often criticised, but I would like to use the platform that the title provides to challenge this opinion. I would like to use my, also my core values and understandings to voice opinions, make changes, and play an active role within my community. To be Miss Gibraltar is something that would be very special to me. Over the years, the pageant has developed into an entity that has um, revolved itself around humanitarian and charity work, both, both of which are, um, I feel very passionate about. And if I was selected, I would use my, the reign to help with charities or as many charities as I can and continue with the work that past uh, winners have achieved. I think the next Mr. Bolter should be someone that's very kind-hearted and likes to help the community as well. And that likes to meet new people all the time, like making new friends and getting along with everyone else is an important thing. And basically as well, that just loves giving kindness to everyone and whoever needs the help. I believe I should be crowned Mr. Bolter because I'm a humble, laid-back person. I, I stay true to myself. Um, I believe I'll bring something different to the community. It's a small community, so being open-minded to me is quite important. So being unique is makes us who we are. Entering Mr. Bolter was way out of my comfort zone. Throughout the journey, I have overcome my shyness and I've built on my confidence. I believe it will be a great privilege to represent Gibraltar abroad. Being crowned Mr. Bolter would be a huge honour, um, but a serious responsibility as well. I believe I can take on that responsibility and hopefully make myself and others proud. I've actually waited several years to enter this pageant as I wanted to reach a certain level of maturity that I feel is necessary for this role. My experience at university and my current career as a teacher has made me very independent and I'm able to make choices and face responsibilities on a daily basis. I love teaching children as I can be a positive role model, so if I were honoured with this title I would continue to inspire and influence people. Well, if I was to be Crown Mr. Rota, 
I feel like it would be an honor for me. The Mr. World winners have inspired me to join as what they do for the community, especially all the charity events that they do. If I believe, if I were to be crowned as Gibraltar, that I would be a great ambassador for Gibraltar and, and especially to represent Gibraltar abroad. Becoming Miss Gibraltar would be an honor in itself. Any Miss Gibraltar should be warm and humble, but yet passionate and determined about everything she does. These are qualities which I believe I have. If I were crowned Miss Gibraltar, I would use my passion and determination to inspire others and raise awareness within and outside of society. I would use the platform to uh, raise concerns within the community and above all to serve Gibraltar well. It would be an honor to represent Gibraltar as a true Gibraltarian. Honestly, I think I've got very good qualities which would be a happy character a caring person, and I think that this would enhance and help me through the reigning of Mr. Gibraltar, if obviously I would be the lucky candidate to be chosen. This has also been something that I've been wanting to do from a very young age, and honestly, I thought that this was my year, so I gave myself a push, and I truly believe I could be a great ambassador for Gibraltar, and it would be my dream come true. Kalpe House has helped families for many years. My granddad visited Kalpe House 16 years ago, and the facilities are still going strong, helping families on a daily basis. This includes, this includes a family member of mine, which unfortunately needs the facilities of a disabled room. Most of the times, these facilities are taken up. With the new renovation of Kalpe House, these problems will be resolved. Thanks to the help of our community, we'll get closer to a six million pound target. You have two hands, one to help yourself and one to help others. Let's work together to make this dream into reality. I had the unfortunate experience of losing a younger sister and during her times of need, we did not have a facility such as Galpe House. No one should be alone while suffering and hopefully no one will if we all work together. I have been to cut the house myself. We need to continue working towards a great cause for the benefits of all Gibraltarians. Sickness is inevitable, and unfortunately, we all know someone who has benefited from using Galpe House. We need to work together, hand in hand, and continue to fundraise for this fantastic cause. As a nurse, I have cared for many patients who required treatment in the UK. This facility can now accommodate many more patients and families, giving them a little sunshine on a rainy day. I've recently seen for myself 
why supporting Kalpe House really makes a difference to all of us in Gibraltar. I just hope we can continue to raise funds beyond this show to help make this vision of a new and larger accommodation materialize as soon as possible. It's clear that we've all been touched by this in one way or another. And so it has been a privilege to have raised awareness for a cause so close to all our hearts. Our home, away from home, Galpe House. Thank you. at Bianca's to baking for the community the girls have certainly been keeping very busy with their fundraising and they've also uh, been brave enough to organize uh, their own individual event uh, helping to raise even more money and this has ranged from a skydive would you be brave to definitely do that? not but we've obviously got some very brave <laughs> contestants this year neither the to washing cars I mean they've done it or they've held uh, awareness days at their schools uh, dolphin trips I mean all in the name of uh, charity but the most important thing about the work that they've done uh, for Galpe House is not the amount of money that they've raised. What we wanted this to be is an awareness uh, campaign so that we're all aware about the needs of Galpe House. So that as a community, we need to raise £6 million for this fantastic and amazing project. And hopefully, this has just helped to raise awareness so that the fundraising and the support from our fantastic community can continue beyond the show. Let's give the contestants a huge, huge round of applause for the fantastic work done. Of course, we also have to mention the girls' biggest group fundraiser, which was the charity single, Our Home. And I think it's a song that's really been embraced by the community. So how about we hear it live on stage here tonight? So here is Our Home with Tim Garcia and After, and after Hours. hours.
And they deserve every single applause from tonight's audience. Thank you very much for being so supporting. It's such a catchy tune as well, written by Tem Garcia, music by After Hours. We've had people just humming along, singing along in the rehearsals. I'm sure you all know it by now as well. Thank you for your support. Definitely. We also have to say a very big thank you for all the one pound donations made by the Jib Telecom premium telephone line. So every pound counts. Thank you for that. So we put that uh, pound into the pot, which uh, we raised money with uh, the cake sale, as you saw earlier with uh, the Tupperware, Buckets, Morrison's, many, many other events. So let's not keep you waiting anymore. Let's uh, find out. It's time uh, to find out how much they've raised. Alan. That's right, James. What a tremendous effort by the Miss Gibraltar girls. Time now to reveal the amount. The Miss Gibraltar charity project has raised... £15,000. Well done, girls. What a fantastic amount. I think they deserve one more big round of applause. Many, many congratulations on your amazing work for Galpe House, girls. Coming up shortly, but no, don't worry because we're going to be showing you a very special behind the scenes look at how the girls have been preparing for tonight. That's if you're watching from home, if you're here in the auditorium with us, there's going to be a 25 minute break that's coming up very shortly. But first, you've seen him on stage already. We'll welcome him back uh, as a singer. Of course, uh, you may know Simon Dumas as well as frontman of uh, the band Frontier singing Stitchers. It's Simon Dumas. <laughs> I thought that I'd been hurt before But no one's ever left me quite this sore Your words go deeper than a knife Now we need someone to breathe it back to life All right, let's go, let's go Got a feeling that I'm going, going under but I know that I'll make it out alive If I quit calling you my lover But move on You watch me bleed until I can't breathe But shake and fall off to my knees And I'll be I'm without your kisses I'll be needing stitches Tripping over myself I'm shaking back I'm both drawn to a flame You let me in I couldn't sense the pain Your bitter heart cold to the touch Now I'm gonna reap what I sow I'm done seeing red on my own Got a feeling that I'm going under But I know that I'm if I quit calling you my lover, move on. You watch me bleed until I can't breathe. I'm shaking, falling onto my knees. And I'll be without your kisses. I'll be needing stitches. Creeping over myself. I'm shaking, begging you to come help. And I'll be without your kisses. I'll be needing Let's clap along, let's go. Needle in a thread, gonna get you out of my head. Needle in a thread, gonna wind up there. 
Needle in the thread, gonna get you out of my head. Needle in the thread, gonna wind up there. Needle in the thread, gonna get you out of my head. Needle in the thread, gonna wind up there. Needle in the thread, gonna get you out of my head. Get you out of my head. The contestants in evening wear. West End superstar Kerry Ellis. And the crowning of a new Miss Gibraltar. Stay right there. Welcome back. There have been costume changes, diva fits, and a full makeup team. And that was just James's dressing room. James, diva fits? I don't believe it. I'm in shock. I mean, five makeup artists, ten assistants, just demanding blue M&Ms in the bowl. I mean, that's not too much to ask for, is it? Well, <laughs> moving on with the show. Um, it's a big night for our ladies, and even people here in the auditorium, they jammed themselves up for tonight. It's a big occasion. But for the girls in particular, it's a special night. They've been working very hard on their dresses, keeping a very big secret up until now. And now it's time for the big reveal. And I have to say, they're looking stunning backstage. Just wow. Yeah, absolutely stunning. I can feel the nerves. I can feel the excitement. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the contestants in their evening wear. <laughs> Kiss you on the dance floor. I wish I could be like that. I can't be like that. Cause all the arms we keep behind closed doors. Every time I see you, I die a little more. Stolen moments that we steal when the curtain falls It'll never be enough It's obvious you're meant for me Every piece of you it just fits perfectly Every moment, every thought I'm in so but I'll never show it on my face But we know this We've got a love that is hopeless Why can't you
Wild Street, or can I kiss you on the dance floor? I wish that it could be like that. Why can't we be like that? Cause I'm yours. I'm yours. Wrapped up, so consumed by all this hurt. If you ask me, don't know where to start. Anger, love, confusion. Somewhere better close you always take me there Came to you with a broken faith Gave me more than I had to hold Caught before I hit the ground Tell me I'm safe, you got me now Would you take the wheel If I lose control If I'm lying here or will you take me home? Could you
So nine contestants, one crown. Do you have your favorites? Well, I'm sure you do, but we've got one final chance to see them all again before the judges make that all important decision. So John McIntosh Hall here, so let's bring the roof down. Let's hear it one more time for our Miss Gibraltar contestants. <laughs> Good champagne, drive a plane, 
But ladies, let's hear it one final time. Who will it be? One of them tonight becomes Miss Gibraltar 2016. You and me got a whole lot of history. We can be the greatest team. look amazing and judges the time has now come for you to tally up those points and decide on tonight's winner and it's uh, good to see you on your your feet uh, for the contestants uh, and as you tally uh, those uh, points as promised plenty more entertainment coming your way this evening as promised yeah backstage is buzzing we are extremely extremely excited to have a leading West End vocalist with us on the show tonight Yes, and I wonder how long it took her backstage when she used to paint her face green every single night for seven or nine performances in the week. I'm sure many of you will probably have seen her in Wicked, both uh, in the West End or on Broadway. But she's done many, many more musicals. Like We Will Rock You, Chess, Les Mis, Oliver, My Fair Lady. And the list just goes on and on, Cats. And recently, she's just been on tour with Brian May. Well, this morning, she said that she's quickly falling in love with Gibraltar. I'm sure, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to fall in love with Kerry Ellis tonight. 
ladies and gentlemen, Carrie Ellis. Can anybody find me somebody to joy absolute joy to be here in front of you wonderful wonderful people and all you at home I have fallen in love with Gibraltar and I just love it here so thank you for having me and I hope to return soon nothing is so good it lasts 
lasts eternally. Perfect situations must go wrong. But this has never yet prevented me wanting far too much for far too long. Looking back, I could have played it differently. Want a few more moments, who can tell? But it took time to understand the man. Now at least I know, I know him well. Wasn't it good? Isn't he fine? So Isn't it madness? He won't be mine. But in the end, he needs a little bit more than me. More security. I'm sure that he needs me If you are lonely, then you will know When someone needs you, you love them so I won't be tried to rust the people say Keep it going for these beautiful back end dancers. Come on, girls, let's see. Them. <laughs> you can't stop today no. as it comes beating down the track. Ooh, oh, yeah. Yesterday is history, it's and it's never coming back. Because tomorrow is a brand new day.
our beautiful backing vocalists and our After Hours band. Now this song is so personal to me. It not only won me the role of Meet in We Will Rock You, but it also introduced me to my dear friend, Brian May. So this is a special song for me. This is No One But You. to help me with this one. I think you know what it is. <laughs> Let's see those hands in the air. And you can get on your feet if you like. A boy make a big noise playing in the street gonna be a big man someday you got mud on your face your big disgrace kicking that can all over the place sing it we will we will rock you beautiful let me hear you we will we will rock you yeah <laughs> a buddy you're a young man hard man shouting in the street gonna take on the world someday you got blood on your face your big disgrace Waving that banner all over the place Singing We will, we will rock you Yeah, come on Gibraltar, let me hear you We will, we will rock you Oh yeah A buddy, you're an old man Poor man, beat him with your eyes Gonna make 
you some peace someday you got blood on your face you big disgrace somebody better put you back in your place sing it we will we will rock you yeah come on let me hear you we will we will rock you i know you can sing this louder we And how fantastic it is uh, to see a star like uh, Kerry Earlis uh, performing uh, with our very own talent, the Gibraltar Academy of Dance and live music by After Hours. <laughs> and of course, there's one song we couldn't uh, let Kerry leave with singing. Let's have one more. Ladies and gentlemen, Kerry Ellis.
everybody. And we hope you're enjoying the show tonight, brought to you by Stage One for the Ministry of Culture. And Kerry Ellis here with us, port of the Rock Hotel. Wasn't she spectacular? What a amazing, voice. Amazing, amazing. And the crowning is now imminent. We are moments away from having a new Miss Gibraltar. Are we excited? <laughs> but first, why don't we see how Miss Gibraltar 2015, Hannah Vado, spent her reigning year? From a very young age, I dreamt of becoming a Miss Gibraltar. Fortunately, that dream became a reality last year. I've always believed a woman is truly most beautiful for her actions and behavior. Throughout my reign, I've tried to reach out to different charities, especially the Cancer Relief Center, the Animal in Need Foundation, and the Little Princess Trust. My year has truly been filled with life-changing experiences. I traveled to China and competed in the Miss World pageant. I learned a lot of important life skills during this trip and created close and unique bonds with girls that will last a lifetime. These memories and experiences will always carry a special place in my heart and have helped me become a more mature woman today. To my successor, remember, you're proudly wearing that sash that says Gibraltar. My name is Hannah Babo, and I'm proud to be wearing this crown and sash. I am proud to be Gibraltarian, and I'm proud to have been your Miss Gibraltar 2015. Welcome back on stage our nine beautiful contestants. Nothing I can see but you when you dance, 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 dance. Feeling good, creeping up on you, so just dance, dance, dance. Come on! All those things that you do to you, but you dance, 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 dance. Ain't nobody leaving soon, so keep dancing. So just dance, 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 get some of the feeling. So just dance, 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 get some of the feeling. So just dance, 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 get some of the feeling. So just dance, dance, dance. Can't stop the feeling And if I can just invite the Minister for Culture, Stephen Linares, onto the stage, please, to present the prizes. And uh, as we come to the end, I can't believe we're already at the end of the night. We just want to jump on that side, Kelly. Uh, Kelly, do you want to grab your two? Very tense here. <laughs> Miss Photogenic goes to contestant number eight, Aisha Binyaya, sponsored by MRW. Miss Catwalk this year goes to contestant number three, Kaylee Masood, sponsored by Jib Oil. <laughs> Miss Friendship, as voted for by the other contestants, goes to contestant number one, Sarah Jane Adnett, sponsored by MH Bland. And the prize for best interview chosen by the Gibraltar Chronicle goes to contestant number five, Josanne Bear, sponsored by GM International.
Josanne, Kaylee, Sarah Jane, Aisha, many, many congratulations on your awards. Uh, can I now invite Seamus to please hand me the three envelopes containing the names of the second princess, thank you, first princess, and Miss Gibraltar 2016. The names, ladies and gentlemen, are written down. And contestants, before we proceed to the announcement uh, on behalf of the entire team, I just want to thank you all and congratulate you for your huge efforts tonight and your achievements. They've worked extremely hard, and I think that's showed tonight. There are three names here, but let's hear it one more time for all our contestants tonight. Thank you so much. Okay, so here we go. Second princess tonight goes to contestant number eight, Aisha Benyaya, sponsored by Emma W. Your second princess, Aisha Benyaya. First princess and runner-up to Miss Gibraltar 2016. Contestant number five, Josanne Bear, sponsored by GM International Homes. Zambia, first princess. Ladies and gentlemen, you really know what uh, that uh, means. We've been saying it time and time again, but this really is the moment you've been waiting for. Miss Gibraltar 2016 is... Contestant number three, Kaylee Mifsud, sponsored by Jibble. Congratulations to our brand new Miss Gibraltar, Kaylee Mitsud. Kaylee, how are you feeling right now? Oh my God, this, I never thought this would happen. <laughs> and I, I, just, I would just love to thank the judges. Thank you so much. And my family and friends, thank you and everyone. It's been an amazing experience and it's been amazing to meet all the contestants behind me. Seriously, they're the best group. I love you girls, it's been amazing. <laughs> Your new Miss Gibraltar, Kaylee Mitsud. Joined on stage now by first princess Josanne Bear and second princess Aisha Benyaya. <laughs> Your 
Gibraltar, Miss Gibraltar 2016, representing us at the Miss World pageant later on this year. With first princess Josanne Bea, second princess Aisha Ben Yaya, this was a show by stage one. For the Ministry of Culture, we leave you with Miss Gibraltar 2016, Kaylee Mifsud. Good night. It's that time of the year again with the Miss Gibraltar pageant upon us. 2016 has attracted nine contestants, with one of these ladies taking home a crown. This year, the group has been raising money for a most worthwhile cause, the Calpa House Charity Trust, which for decades has been providing a place to stay in London for those in need of essential medical treatment whilst in the capital. Through several events and public appearances, the contestants have been championing the cause of Calpe House, trying their utmost to raise awareness. One such event had the contestants rolling up the sleeves and whipping up a selection of tasty treats for a charity bake sale. Some really delicious creations there, all baked for a good cause. Besides these public events, the contestants have also used their own initiative with some interesting concepts for fundraising. My individual charity event was a dolphin safari with Dolphin Adventure. I wanted to do something that would get the whole family involved and engage children and try and raise awareness to children about Galpe House whilst giving them a fun day out and seeing dolphins in their natural environment. Well, I decided to do a fitness day at my school in Notre Dame, so I kind of got together with all the members of staff and we all brought our ideas to the table. And we just made it one big fitness day where parents came in, they could participate in Zumba, Pilates with the children themselves. We based our lessons, our English and maths lessons around fitness and eating healthy, just to make the children aware. 
I was very different, I decided to do a skydive. So um, that was really exciting. Firstly, I was going to do a little cake store, but then I wanted to do something more exciting. And when I started telling people about my idea, they were really supportive and they started giving me more money and everyone started joining in. And that gave me the courage to do it because I think if I wouldn't be doing it for charity, I don't think I would have had the courage to jump out of a plane. <laughs> so yeah, it was really, really good. It was well, I wanted to include my school. I thought it would be fun to include my students and a good way to kind of get them to know what Galpe House is about and what they do. Um, I asked Olga Zamir if she could come and give them a talk and she kindly agreed so the children actually started understanding what I wanted to raise money for. After that, I organised a dress down day. So we all dressed in red and white, just the national colours. And we also organised a bake sale. But I thought the bake sale was going to be kind of like an on-site thing and actually brought in so much money, like the support from parents and carers was overwhelming. They kept bringing in cakes and scones and we raised 1,350 pounds on one day just with the dress down the bake sale. So I was very, very proud, yeah, very grateful. Well, I've done a couple of events. One of them was a quiz night, which was held in work Kalpe. I got my family, friends and colleagues to help out. Um, I've also done some dress down days, a barbecue as well. And we've done a raffle. So it's about quite a few things I've done. Well, I did like a raising fun, basically washing cars and motorbikes. So we've been coming around, been washing cars and helping around. And I had my family as well helping, so it was quite a fun day. And yeah, <laughs> we had so much fun. When we first started, we were asked to arrange an individual event. And I thought something that most of my friends and family could contribute to or would like to do. And I thought most of my family love going on walks and they're quite active. So I thought I'd start with doing a charity walk. And I thought my family also like to eat and drink. And we thought, well, what better than to finish the walk with a nice barbecue. And um, Eclipse Lounge kindly offered to host that for us. It was great. It was a great turnout. We had over 40 people turn up friends, family, friends of friends. We all kept together, we walked up the rock, we walked um, all the way to the other side, came down, walked through town and then ended up at Eclipse Lounge where we had a really nice bar barbecue. Well, at the beginning we did a charity bake sale which we did in Piazza, which we raised quite a bit of money. And then for our individual events, I did a Piloxin masterclass with the help of master trainer Janine Pereira, which she helped me out a lot raised over 300 pounds on the day and then I did a mini charity event at work which I s raffled out a box of cupcakes and a cake that I had. Well what I've done is I actually had help from my job. I actually asked if I was able to do a raffle in order to fundraise the money for Galpe House obviously and actually it went really well because they actually donated a massive gift basket for us so it actually helped many people to contribute towards the worthy cause. And I think it actually came out very well. We had a lucky winner. We did it during a whole month and we've actually raised quite a bit. So hopefully all the contributions will help in order to fundraise the large amount that we need. Throughout the decades, Scalpe House has been a great support to families who in times of ill health have needed to travel to London in need of specialist treatment. To find out a little more about the charity and the good work it does, I spoke to trustee Olga Zamit. Olga, so we're talking about uh, Calpe House, an establishment uh, that's very much at the heart of the community, a home away from home. But if you had to describe it, I mean, what would you say? Why is it so indispensable to Gibraltar? It's so good because it's a moral support for Gibraltar. If you're in a hotel, as Charlie Tilbury, the, the present chairman, who, who, who invented the thing together with somebody else, Peter Gaetano, who sadly died a few years later. Charlie said to me, I lay in my hotel room because he had an operation, then he had to come out but not travel yet. And staring at the ceiling, and my wife wanted to go out and stretch her legs and perhaps get me something, but she couldn't cook for me anyway. And you thought, if only I had somewhere here where we could have self-catering. And between them, they, they thought of this idea. And it's become such a big, A, moral support, because if you're there with your husband, say, well, you can leave him with somebody else to look after from Gibraltar while you go out for a couple of hours and get some food or whatever. And of course, the huge financial aspect as well. When you go, you still have to carry on paying your mortgage, your rent, expenses here, children who are left behind. All that represents a big thing, and, and to go there and not pay anything. So it's free, it's totally free, other than the food, but you would be feeding yourself here anyway. One man said to me, he said, I went feeling so miserable, he took his daughter, and he said, and by the time I was there a few days, I was feeling lucky. 
because there were so many other people who were worse off than I was. And anyway, we were supporting each other and, and sharing our, our moods and so on. And it was such a big help. And, and so it helps on the financial aspect and the moral support. You don't feel alone. Would you say it's an invaluable service almost because uh, yes. it really makes a difference uh, to patients and it's almost a lifeline in itself? Absolutely. And you never know when you're going to need it. Once or twice people have come up to me and said, but you've never been in Capri House. I said, well, thank goodness I haven't. I'll keep all fingers and toes crossed that I don't. But if I do, I know it's there. And I've known so many people, fellow teachers who have gone, neighbours who have gone, people who have gone there for whom it's made such a big difference. Obviously, the campaign is running and things are ticking along smoothly. We've got the 15 million mark to reach. So what kind of feedback has the committee had from the community? It's been great. I mean... James Nish and Stage One Productions came forward immediately, they were so prompt and I've been with the girls twice, the, the participants and they're a great bunch of girls, they're a terrific group and they're so committed, they're doing so much, they've been doing so much uh, for Galpe House, it's been wonderful. Um, I, I think it's great, but the rest of the community is coming forward. People are committing to a regular payment, which, which is the easy way for, with the bank. I've done it myself, certainly. The, the corporate, the commercial, they're coming forward and saying, yes, yes, we're going to do this as well. So it's, it's very encouraging. It's, so um, keep coming forward and keep bringing the money. It's a lot of money. That's the only thing. As a teacher, I think I've never dealt in millions. <laughs> That's not my life. Teachers don't deal in millions. So. And Olga, why exactly do we need that sum of money? What type of refurbishment are we talking about uh, with the new building? It's huge. It's a listed property. Westminster Council has to give permission for every step of the way. But because it was old, water was coming in the roof. It was really a derelict building by now. It needs total redoing but people have seen it patients who were there and and their families they say it's going to be wonderful when it's ready it's, it's Gibraltar's thing we're doing it for people of Gibraltar we never know who's going to need it when they're going to need it it's very encouraging it's, it's for our people it's for us it's for us as the big night drew closer the contestants had a surprise of the community a fashion show was arranged at Gustavo Vacarisa's gallery in Casemates. Here, friends and family gathered for the girls' first official catwalk appearance. was another big reveal, a charity single composed by a local band After Hours featuring the girls, along with a music video produced by Jib Media, something that had been kept under wraps for months. The single was part of Stage One's campaign to raise funds for the new premises in Norfolk Square. Taking on a whole new challenge, the girls were at first unsure about the vocal abilities. But with their enthusiasm for such a worthy cause and taking on a new experience, backed by the talents of After Hours, the end result was something to be proud of. Well, Jane said we had a surprise in stock, so when we came past the Jamak, I thought we were going to come and see the Jamak in Tafon. We went down to see 
the, where the after hours I was like surprised when they said we were going to sing I was shocked because I'm not much of a singer but I guess my voice came out at the end it was quite a shock really we came here it's like oh yeah you're singing I was like I can't sing it's like I was like saying to everyone I'm so sorry if it starts raining because I can't sing so I found it really good experience oh it was amazing uh -huh. I have a newfound voice apparently I didn't even know I could sing but um it yeah, it was great. At first it was nerve-wracking and we were told to learn the lyrics, but because we've done it so many times, it just came naturally to us, really. I didn't have to sit at home and learn the lyrics, and I think after I was did a really great job. They're really catchy lyrics, and um, yeah, they just stuck with me the whole time. It was really hard not to sing it at home, though, I must say, because it was just at the forefront of my head the whole time, and yeah, we just... It was great, great experience, and I'm really glad they, they sprung that on us, even though it was nerve-wracking at first. I was shocked. I was like, no way this is happening. Um, I'm really happy to do this. I was super excited, and as well, like, we've been told it's going to be like the official song now for Kalpe House, so obviously that's really exciting, and I feel quite blessed to be part of this because it's so special. We had a laugh, though. It was funny, because obviously not everyone's like, good at singing, and it was just, we were just laughing like, with each other. It was, it was really good, yeah. It was funny. That was a massive shock, honestly, because I never expected in a million years to have to be singing. But actually, I'm very proud of all of us because I never thought we'd put such a good song together and sing it the way it is. And it's quite meaningful to the people who have actually known and been through Kalpe House. And it's been an amazing experience, honestly. Never thought I'd actually get behind a mic and be singing and doing music videos and stuff like that. So, honestly, amazing. I think I was probably one of the most shocked and nervous um, about doing it because I don't have the best singing voice. But no, I mean, once we eased into it, at first it was a bit of a shock. After that, like, I, I could probably sing in front of anyone now <laughs> after doing it so many times. <laughs> when James told us we had to sing, <laughs> I don't think it went down very well. <laughs> Um, no, but um, obviously we did it in bits and everyone joined in. It was really fun. Um, it was a big icebreaker because we had just joined Miss Jib and we didn't really know everyone that well. Um, so singing in front of each other <laughs> broke the ice and it was a lot of fun. It was. At the beginning when he, we, we didn't know anything, he just took us to a room, the studio, and he said, right, we're singing. And we all just stayed, what, we're singing? He said, yeah, we're just singing. I was like, oh, okay. But yeah, it, has, it was a great experience. It was something different that no one has ever really done before. It was a bit of a surprise, to be honest. I mean, we entered Miss Gibraltar. We didn't expect to have to sing. But I was pleasantly su surprised with it because I feel like we all really got into it and it was a lot of fun. It was a new experience. And I think that the community has taken very kindly to it. And I'd like to thank everyone who shared the video on Facebook, donated and supported us. The contestants stepping out of their comfort zone there and finding their voices. To find out more about the music and to shed some light on the thinking behind the single, I spoke to composer and vocalist of After Hours, Tim Garcia. It first started when James actually commissioned after Hours to be the resident house band for the Mr. Balter 2016 composition. And he then floated this idea that he wasn't sure whether or not we'd take it up or whether it was possible, but he just wanted to, to put it out there and see whether we take it away and, and make it a reality. We first got together in the room and started playing through a few chord progressions, trying to make it sound like a, a charity single would. To be honest, I, it was only when I started to write the lyrics that I started to identify with the song and I started to, to appreciate and think about what the Galpe House means to the Gibraltarians and I don't think there could be a, a better cause to, to write about because it's certainly very important to past, current and future Gibraltarians and it's always been for us there in our hours of need. It's a pleasure to be able to make a small contribution towards its own hour of need now and the, the new Galpa House premises. So what was the thinking then in those uh, lyrics, uh, Our Home, obviously evoking uh, that message? It, it just came to us in the sense that when we were playing through the, the chorus that we'd written, uh, melodically it seemed to fit and the message also fit. It, it is very much from, from experiences uh, that have been recounted to me from people who've used it. It is very much 
and feels like a home away from home. And that's the message that we wanted to get across. We, we wanted to almost uh, show that even in dire medical circumstances, Gibraltarians can still rally round and find comfort and warmth and happiness. And, and it is a very uplifting place from what I hear. And I hope it will be for, for many years to come. You obviously take lead vocals, but the song features the Mr. Brulter contestants. So how would you rate their performance? It was brilliant and worrying at the same time. <laughs> the first time I heard them in the rehearsal room, I actually thought, hang on, I may need to re-record my parts because I'm not, <laughs> I'm not sure they're going to stand up to this. But uh, it's very daunting for anybody, even as a singer, to go into a rehearsal room and to break down a song line by line. And frankly, for some of them who haven't had any singing experience, to be able to do that and to do it so competently and have such a great product at the end of it is, is really all credit to them. Hopefully the whole community can, can get behind not just the song but the cause and, and help build and raise those uh, six million pounds that are required for the Galba House. Galba House is something that all Gibraltarians might have to use one day. Sickness is unpredictable so you never know if you personally will have to be admitted or my, my family themselves, my parents have been guests there, my auntie and uncle have constantly been going backwards and forwards so it's something that I think is very important for the community and for everyone really. Never knowing what. Personally I think it is uh, quite um, important for us, it's, we are quite a close community, we do know people who go over so it is quite touching for us. I know Galpe House is something very close to all of Gibraltar's hearts. Being able to contribute to, towards the refurbishment of Galpe House, I know it's going to make a huge difference to those families that have to fly over so often. There are families that have to go for months for treatment, so having Galpe House is definitely a big help, apart from the fact that we have our own community there, so it's a little bit of Gibraltar you're taking with you. I think it's very important because you never know in the future. Um, it's quite a stable thing to have in Gibraltar because not everyone has this. We're very, very lucky. We have to be comfortable where we are, especially being in a really kind of crucial time. You know, you're sick and all you want to do when you're sick is be comfortable. This is really important because I think everyone in Gibraltar knows someone or has someone that uses these facilities. So yeah, it means a lot to me. I'm actually really happy that we're doing this all together. Like a lot of the girls have personal experiences and kind of connections to Galpe House. I was unfortunate to have my younger sister pass away and we didn't have a facility like Galpe House to stay in. So for me, it's comforting to know that all of this work on expanding Galpe House hopefully means that less people will have to be turned down and no one should really have to feel alone when they're going through this hard time. Personally, my granddad was unfortunately in Galpe House uh, 16 years ago, which is a long time from now, but thanks to the facilities, he's still going strong. And obviously, as we can see, that the, within the years, it will carry on growing strong and helping more families and having more opportunities for different people having the opportunity to go and actually having a place to stay and feel at home. I think it's quite good they're doing this kind of thing for Galpe House because I have personal things with my sister that unfortunately she's no longer here. Oh, it meant the world to me. When I got there, I met so many people with different treatments and it just make you feel welcome and it's lovely and, and I think it's really good that we're doing this charity for Galpe House for our generations as well, for people that have to go there in the future. As a nurse, it's touched me personally as I work with patients who have been diagnosed with illnesses and have had to go abroad to the UK for treatment. So knowing that the Calpe House and its new facilities can facilitate their and accommodate their families. I did spend some time there recently visiting my father, so I mean it's been something that's been really close to heart. I'm really glad that, that it is the, co the cause that we're supporting this year because it's something that I feel very passionate about. The aim 
aim of the track Our Home is to shed some light on the important work being achieved by the Calpe House Trust. Remember, you too can help by pledging money to this invaluable service, this home away from home.